Hi again, everyone. I'm Ali Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is a sponsored video, sponsored by Sue for Anonymous. And here's Anonymous' story. It's taken me forever to write this letter to you. Three years. I listen to your subscribers' stories constantly. In the beginning, nonstop for like two months straight. That's all I did. Thank you all. That is when I decided to end my marriage mentally to my passive-aggressive introvert husband in 2016. He refuses to give me a divorce. Since then, I have lost 70 pounds and I never felt better. That was the first level of my healing. Now I'm ready for the next and I'm open to any perspective to my story you will give me. Don't go easy on me. I'm open. This letter is only the first part. I moved to Ecuador in 2015. Next April, I will have been here five, for five years alone here with our three boys, ages 15, 12, and 10. And believe me, it is not easy. I am a so-called black American female, and I stick out here like a sore thumb. Their father and I plan to move down here to live, to have a better life for our children, and things are much better here for us, in mine and my boys' opinion. Their grandfather was born here, and their father has family here, which gave us the privilege of being legal Ecuadorian citizens after going through the legal process of attaining it. We have dual citizenship here and in the United States. I was the one who found all the information we needed to obtain our citizenship. We never hired an attorney. I did everything, and he agreed to it. He has an industrial job and told me that he would find a contract job that he would be able to work for six months at a time at one job and then visit every month and take time off for six months to be here with his family. Because I know his future, because I know his future faking promises, I warned him that I was serious about moving if he didn't come through with a promise to work six months contracts and it would be his fault for ruining our plan. He insisted that his plan would be fail-proof. Two years and four visits later, I got very discouraged waiting for him to find a contract job so he would be able to come down here and spend more time with his family. Then, for a year, he told me of the prospects of finding a job in the main port city, even though he doesn't speak the language. April 8th, our dog of nine years that we brought from the United States was hit by a car in front of our house running to the beach. He bolted out the door before we could stop him. It was devastating to all of us when he died. But then a week later, an earthquake hit and many people lost their lives in their homes. We felt it hard, but our house did not come down like many in the lower part of the country. At that point, I was begging for him to find a home for us to come back to the United States to be a family again. I had already... I had been already asking him to find a place for us to come back home since I couldn't do it being in Ecuador. I would send him phone numbers and him to make appointments with brokers to look at homes. He never did it. He was always too busy or out of town working. He never made time to do what he had to do. Well, at some point you got to take the hint. I mean, and I've talked to Anonymous before. I've Skyped with her and phone calls. I, I mean, I, I think he has another family. Personally, he sounds like a guy living a dual life to me. Sounds like he's got another family somewhere. Whatever it is, he likes you being, being in South America while he's working in the United States. And you mean to tell me after after an earthquake, there's no industrial jobs for the cleanup and the reconstruction bullshit. He don't want to come. He don't want to come back. For two years, he told me when I asked him if he was looking diligently for a home because it was taking too long. He would always reply, yes, but I have been working a lot. Granted, he travels all over the country on contract jobs. There were times that he worked at home at his home office long enough to look for a home for us to come back to. He claims until this day when he is not working on a job that pays for his hotel, he is sleeping in our Nissan Armada with luggage, with luggage we could not take with us and part 
our storage. He could never take to put in the storage because we were late on our bill. Or if we were caught up, he was on a job. So for two years, he claims that he sleeps in our armada with the, with the back flatbed filled to the top with storage. Did you ever ask? Okay, take a picture of it. Let's say, let me say it. Take a picture of it and send it to me. When I tell him he's got to be lying about something, he gets angry and starts blasting me about where I'm spending the money because I have full control of the money and the budget and that he is sleeping in the car to save money. I had to beg him to put money aside for himself because I don't know what his expenses are and that he needs to be responsible for the car and insurance payments because he is the one driving the car. When I ask him if he is with someone else, he blows up as if I can have the audacity to think such a thing after only having sex with him seven times in the past four years. Yeah, he's with some, when he when he when they blow up when you ask them, they're with someone else. I'm telling you, this guy this guy's either with someone else or he has a full another family. He's been telling me that he's been sleeping in the car for the past four years. In 2016, he broke his foot. This was his excuse not of not coming to see his three boys because he had to go to physical therapy. When I ask him why not take the workers' comp and live here and get free medical benefits and recuperate here with his family for six months, he told me he was not eligible for the workers' comp because he was, only, because he was still working 40 hours at the desk. Something didn't sound right about that, but I let it go. A year later, he opened a bank account in his name, and the bank automatically linked it to the joint account. And when I went to do the budget to see how much money was in the money in the account, it popped up. Three thousand, three thousand was in the account. I called to ask him where the money came from, and he told me from from Workman's, forgetting what he had told me the previous year. This, this is after two and a half years of not coming to Ecuador to see his three boys and a year and a half after he broke his foot. I went back in my mind to think and told him I thought he was not eligible for workers' comp and he started questioning me in continuation of another argument from when I visited the States to go shopping about where the money, where is the money going. He tells me I am spending the money and that is why he cannot come visit. When I know where the money is, when I when he knows where the money is going, he went with me when I shopped and can see everything I purchased before I got there on Amazon. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention this. While I was in Florida for two weeks, he didn't even try to touch me in the hotel we stayed at and then blame me. He told me he didn't try anything with me or try to touch me because he didn't want me to think that's all that's all he thinks about is sex. After not seeing me or being with me for a fucking year, actually he did me a favor. <clears throat> I visited Florida to take care of things like my storage, life insurance, eyeglasses, and visiting friends, etc. Four times within the four and a half years I lived in Ecuador. I li anyway, so he continued with this stupid argument of where is the money going after he found out. Ollie, where is the money going? Really? I have a restaurant here, three boys to feed and clothe and rent to pay. And don't get it twisted, shit is not always so cheap here in Ecuador. Even though we use U.S. dollars, we are still taxed 40% on all imports. A jar of Jif peanut butter here for a, medium, for a medium jar is $14. Jesus. Yeah, he's spending money on his other family. Or whatever else he's into, his girlfriend or his other family. But it sounds like dude, I, I, I've told you this. This sounds like a, this sounds like the, a, a guy who's living a double life. And there's the yelling again. Sometimes the rent can even be astronomical, considering the economics here. I think paying eight hundred and fifty dollars two blocks from the beach to be. Exp I think paying $850, two blocks from the beach to be expensive, but not to get off subject. He didn't want to take this into consideration when I called him out on the new bank account. So he started confronting me where the money is going when I gave him my accounting book. He didn't want it. He said he didn't take, he said he didn't take it from me in the car on the way back to the airport because I threw it at him. 
but yet he still asks the same questions, but he doesn't want the legitimate answers I give him. So now I'm like, fuck off. I don't even want to get into it with him anymore, which is what he wants. The only time he blows his stack in a passive aggressive rage is when I tell him that the money from work, that the money from workers comp, he could buy two plane tickets to come see his children. He lost it. He blamed me. It is my fault he has not come to visit because I spend all the money. I dared to buy, I dared buy him a ticket. There was three grand in the bank and all the bills were paid. No excuse. Buy the ticket. I told him, I dare you. Ali, this man went into some kind of demonic fit. I couldn't even recognize his voice anymore. I mean, he fucking lost it. Right. They always lose it when they get, when you get close to exposing their truth. He's hiding something major from you here, whether it's another family, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, who knows? Who knows? The fact that he won't even touch you, okay? The fact that even after years, if he does have another family, when he does see you that he wasn't touch you, might even lead me to believe he might be gay. Telling me he can't take time off. He can't just drop everything to leave his job and come down here. He didn't, he didn't come before because his foot was broken, blah, blah, blah. I just hung up on him. My friends were in the room. One spoke only Spanish. The other spoke English as a second language. Both were floored. They couldn't believe what just happened. He even knew I had him on speaker. December of this year will be three years since he has physically seen his sons. I would love to send them to see him, but he has to write the letter to get it notarized, giving me the permission to allow them to leave the country and put them on the airplane. He won't even do that. Aren't they both American citizens? I thought they had dual citizenship. You should be able to do that. If he won't, but if you think if, if that's true or you're under that impression, he's hiding the truth from you here. The truth of, of whatever is going on is here. And every time you get close to exposing it, he freaks out. He has a fucking meltdown. He won't even do that, so he's basically a cyber parent. He plays video games and chats with our boys on some app where they play games together. I forget the name right now because I'm so annoyed. Probably like, probably Discord. When we lived in Florida, he would go away every three to four weeks on a long distance job to be, to be gone for as long as a month or two on a job until he came back home. Then when he came home, all we would do was argue over stupid shit, the same shit. I was getting fatter and fatter after each baby and he would travel and leave me alone with the boys. One time I realized that we hadn't even went on a dinner date for four years and that was 10 years into the marriage. We've never gone out to a movie together in 17 years. I mean, what more can I write? We would have arguments that would last up to four to five hours. Every time I thought we came to some consensus, I would turn around after taking a deep breath, thankful it was over, and knew, no sooner felt the peace. He would pick up from the same place where he apologized for. He would apologize for whatever, and then when things got calm, he would start the argument over again with the same thing apologized for. Crazy making. I can't clearly describe it. It was madness. Then frustrated, I would ask him, why would you apologize and then start the argument again? Two hours later. I would feel drained and defeated and just drink the rest of the wine and go to bed because that's what he wants. He wants you to feel drained and defeated so you'll stop asking him questions so you won't expose whatever he's trying to hide from you. That was our routine for years until we moved to Ecuador. And he says that I am just as responsible for not coming back to the U.S. as well. It's my fault. And when I ask him, how is it my fault? He won't answer. He just screams at me. And he just screams at me, I am just as much to blame for not coming back to the U.S. after waiting for him to find a home for us to come back to for two years until I gave up in 2016. And after all this, he will still not give me a divorce and believes we are a married couple. He told me he would give me a divorce if he found out I was with someone else. Does that make any sense to anyone? 
no, and he's not going to give you a divorce because if he files for divorce, you might find out he's already married. You might find out your marriage is a complete sham and is illegal. He won't talk to you. He won't live with you. He won't fuck you. He won't. It's all, it's all smoke and mirrors. Every time you get close to something, he spirals and loses control. The reason he won't give you the divorce is because the divorce is going to expose whatever his truth is. And I think the truth is he's probably married. He probably has another marriage somewhere that you don't know about. Or he's dating somebody and they don't know he's married in a divorce. Something's up. Something's clearly, something's clearly up with him where he's living some kind of double life. And the narcissist always melts down when you're about to expose or uncover their double life. And that's what, that's what I think is going on. So I hope that helps Anonymous. Thank you for writing in and thank you to sue for sponsoring i really appreciate it thank you to everybody watching please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below and again if you want your story read on the channel you have a topic you'd like me to cover a narcissist you'd like to expose you'd like to have a private video made sponsor a video like this or someone who needs help and can't afford it or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported growing and successful this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.